Hey everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism or a low thyroid functioning. So we're first gonna talk about what hypothyroidism is and we're gonna talk about what thyroid hormones actually do which will help us to understand why signs and symptoms occur in hypothyroidism. So to begin, the thyroid gland, which is a butterfly-shaped gland located in your neck, is responsible for producing two very important hormones, thyroxine, or T4, and triiodothyronine, or T3. These are the thyroid hormones. And these two thyroid hormones play very important roles in our body, and it's important to note that thyroxine can be converted to triiodothyronine, which is a more active thyroid hormone. So the roles that these two thyroid hormones play include the following. One is metabolism, another is movement, and another is mentation. And I use these specific words because it can help us remember what the thyroid hormones do. The thyroid hormones are involved in the three M's. M for metabolism, M for movement, and M for mentation. So you can think of the thyroid hormones activating each of these. Thyroid hormones increase metabolism, increase movement, and increase mentation or thinking or thought processing. So if we have low levels of thyroid hormones, as we see in hypothyroidism, we're going to have low metabolism, low movement, and low mentation. And this is going to help us remember the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism in the next upcoming slides. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism? So the first one I'm going to talk about here is cold sensitivity. So cold sensitivity is actually one of the most common symptoms. And the reason why hypothyroidism can cause cold sensitivity is because, as we mentioned before, thyroid hormones are involved in increasing metabolism. So if we have a low thyroid functioning or low thyroid hormone levels, we're going to have lower metabolism. So we're gonna have a lower core body temperature. So there's going to be issues with cold sensitivity. Another symptom of hypothyroidism is decreased appetite. And again, this is due to having decreased metabolism. We're also gonna see issues with constipation. This is due to decreased bowel functioning. So you can think of it being categorized as decreased metabolism. So if there's a decreased appetite, there's oftentimes going to be decreased bowel movements and bowel functioning. And we can also think of it as the movement component. There's going to be less movement and you can think of it as movement within the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract. So we're gonna have issues with constipation in hypothyroidism. And even though an individual with hypothyroidism has a decreased appetite, they may not be eating as much as they used to, they can actually have weight gain. And weight gain is actually a sign of hypothyroidism. It's usually mild to modest weight gain, and again, this is due to a decreased metabolism. So again, cold sensitivity, one of the most common symptoms. We can see decreased appetite, issues with constipation, and weight gain. And it's, again, usually mild to moderate. And a lot of these are due to decreased metabolic functioning. Another symptom of hypothyroidism is depression. This is usually due to decreased or slowing mentation. So we talked about this before, thyroid hormones are involved in regulating and increasing mentation or cognition. Another symptom of hypothyroidism is fatigue. This is actually quite common and this can be related to a slowed mentation. It can also be related to a slow metabolism and it can also be related to being secondary to a depression as well. Another symptom of hypothyroidism is decreased concentration. So this makes sense if we are saying that thyroid hormones regulate or increase mentation or cognition. If we have low thyroid hormone levels, we're gonna have decreased concentration, we're gonna have decreased cognition. And it can be due to low thyroid hormone levels and it can also be due to depression and fatigue which are also caused by the low thyroid hormone functioning. And then another symptom of hypothyroidism is decreased memory. And again, this can be due to or secondary to depression and fatigue and due to decreased cognition or decreased mentation. So again, due to low thyroid hormone levels, we can see decreased mentation, one of the three M's we talked about before, leading to depression, fatigue, decreased concentration, and decreased memory. Some other signs of hypothyroidism include dry, scaly skin. And this is actually due to decreased eccrine gland secretion. So the mechanism for why this occurs is not entirely known, but it is known that hypothyroidism can lead to decreased eccrine gland secretion and lead to a dry, scaly skin. So this is another sign of hypothyroidism. Another sign of hypothyroidism is hair loss. So this is due to increased hair fall 
and due to reduced hair growth. So hypothyroidism can lead to increased hair fall and reduced hair growth. And then we can also see brittle nails in hypothyroidism. So nails where they're cracked, chipped, and this is due to decreased nail growth in general. So again, some of the other signs of hypothyroidism include dry, scaly skin, hair loss, and brittle nails. We can also see issues with muscle aches and cramps in hypothyroidism. We can see joint pain or arthralgias in hypothyroidism. And we can also see weakness, so not being able to lift things that you may have been able to lift before, so just a generalized weakness. And we can see this weakness occurring because, remember we talked about thyroid hormones being involved in movement. So with reduced thyroid hormone levels, we can see reduced movement, so we can see weakness. And then we can also see delayed deep tendon reflexes. So this is a clinical sign. So when a clinician uses a reflex hammer to tap on the patellar tendon to check the patellar reflex, the leg will jerk out, but there will be a delay in relaxation after that initial response. So that is what a delayed deep tendon reflex is. And it's actually quite common in individuals with hypothyroidism. Up to three quarters of patients can have this response. So again, a way to remember some of these is by that mnemonic we used before, thyroid hormones are involved in increasing or regulating movement. So you can see issues with muscle cramps, joint pain, weakness, and delayed deep tendon reflexes. Some other symptoms of hypothyroidism include paresthesias. So paresthesias are numbness, tingling, and pain sensations, oftentimes in the extremities or in the hands and feet. It usually is due to chronic hypothyroidism, so long-standing hypothyroidism, which causes a fluid buildup leading to damage or injury to nerves. So this is why we get these sensations. We can also see carpal tunnel syndrome occurring in hypothyroidism as well. And this is due to compression or injury to the median nerve in the wrist. And we see numbness and tingling sensations in particular parts of the hand. So we can see numbness and tingling sensation in the thumb, the index finger, middle finger, and half of the ring finger. So half of the ring finger facing the middle finger. And then the other half of the ring finger and the pinky are spared. So that is the classic pattern to carpal tunnel syndrome. So again, we can see paresthesias, numbness and tingling sensations in different parts of the body. This is often due to long-standing chronic hypothyroidism. And then we can also see carpal tunnel syndrome occurring and we see that particular pattern of involvement where we have numbness and tingling sensation in particular fingers in the hand. And this is due to compression or injury to the median nerve. We can also see renal impairment or issues with kidney functioning in hypothyroidism. It's been found that thyroid hormones act on blood vessels in kidneys to alter blood flow to the kidneys. So we can see issues with kidney functioning. And then we can also see peripheral edema in hypothyroidism. We call this myxedema when it is due to hypothyroidism. And it's non-pitting edema. So it's a very tense edema, a very tense swelling. So if you were to push your finger into the edema or into that area of swelling on the extremities, particularly we see this in the legs. So if we were to push on this type of edema, it does not cause a pit. It does not cause an area of compression as opposed to pitting edema where if you were to push on it, you'd have an outline of where your finger had been once you have lifted your finger off of that area. So that's the difference here. So again, renal impairment and peripheral edema are also signs of hypothyroidism. You can also see issues with goiter. So goiter is an enlarged thyroid gland. So you can see in some individuals a very swollen neck. So again, swelling of the front of the neck. And then we can also see a hoarse voice in some cases of hypothyroidism. So this is often due to the enlargement of the thyroid gland where it actually starts to compress vocal cords. So in some cases of hypothyroidism, we can see goiter occurring. So an enlarged thyroid gland, so swelling of the front of the neck. And then because of that swelling, it can actually compress or press on vocal cords and cause a hoarse voice. So we can see these occurring in hypothyroidism as well. And then some other signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism include slow heart rate, which we call bradycardia. 
So a normal heart rate is anywhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute, but we can see in hypothyroidism less than 60 beats per minute. So we can see a slow heart rate. We can also see reduced libido in hypothyroidism, and we can also see menstruation changes in hypothyroidism as well. So we can see oligomenorrhea and amenorrhea. So oligomenorrhea is where the cycle increases in length. So we start to have cycles going longer than 35 days. We start to see less periods occurring throughout the year. And then amenorrhea is when there are no periods at all. So we can start to see changes in the menstrual cycles. So usually lengthening of the menstrual cycles or no period at all. So again, we can see a slow heart rate in hypothyroidism. So this can all be related to low metabolism. So you can think of it that way. Bradycardia, less than 60 beats per minute or slower than usual. We can see a reduced libido and we can see menstruation changes as well. And this is due to hormonal effects that I won't get into here in this lesson, but it can lead to oligomenorrhea and amenorrhea. So if you want to learn more about hypothyroidism and causes of hypothyroidism, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.